be showing uh, uh, what are the functionality of the uh, of the decipher add-on and uh, decipher app that we have developed for the Splunk enterprise. So uh, uh, once the both the packages are installed in the Splunk environment, it will look like uh, uh, this. They will appear on this uh, this uh, home page. And uh, uh, so mainly we will be uh, using it for collecting data from the decipher environment to the Splunk and showing it, uh, uh, showing it in the form of dashboards and widgets in the Splunk environment. So for doing that, first uh, let's go to the uh, add-on. And uh, so main purpose of the add-on is to collect the data from the decipher environment, calling the APIs for alerts and uh, IOCs and uh, 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 getting that data and ingesting it into this Splunk. So for doing that, what we need to do is we need to first create uh, uh, the configuration. Uh, so here we will give uh, a name of the account that we'll be using. So here we can give any uh, any uh, unique name. So I'm giving decipher account and uh, here we need to pass the URL for uh, for the decipher environment. Currently we are using uh, QA decipher. So I'll be giving that and the API key that can be generated from the uh, from that uh, decipher product itself uh, that we need to pass it along with the URL. So uh, so uh, account name must be started with a letter followed by alphabetic later so okay okay then i will give like this uh, no spaces and and this account will be saved so once this account is saved so we uh, we have stored our url and api key into the splunk and now we can use it uh, for collecting alerts data and ioc data for doing that what we can do is we can like uh, create this input from the input step and uh, uh, for uh, collecting the alerts data what we need to do is we need to create an alert input so i will say uh, decipher uh, alert input and uh, uh, this is the interval at which uh, the api will be called and uh, will search for the new data so I will store it into the Cypherma index that I have already created. And uh, here we'll be able to see all the accounts that we have stored in the configuration tab. So we have stored this decipher account. So we'll be using that. Okay. And once I click on add, it will collect the data uh, into the Splunk environment for this alerts input. So we can search the data from uh, the search uh, tab. Here, uh, here we can define the search queries, uh, which will be like uh, we are storing data into Cypher my index. So we can search like this, and here we can see that uh, we are getting data of uh, total eight different source type, which are CIP vulnerability, data leak, impersonation, attack surface, brand infringement, certificates, and IP with vulnerability and phishing. So we are getting data for all eight categories, uh, all these eight categories here. And now uh, that alert data is uh, 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 is ingested, uh, we'll be able to see uh, the raw data here. Like we are getting it in the form of JSON. So it will be showing here, like we can see all the details about it. And below we can see uh, this host is the host name of my, my uh, machine. Source will be the so, uh, Cypher alerts always, and uh, this will, source type will be a category name. Uh, let's uh, so this data is of attack surface. Now for collecting the IOC data, uh, we need to create a separate input which is uh, decipher IOC. We can give uh, a separate name. Let's say decipher uh, IOC input. And uh, uh, here we won't be storing the data into the indexes, but instead we will be storing it into the lookup name, lookup file, which is uh, basically a CSV file in the uh, in the Splunk environment. So here we can give any name of that CSV file. I'm giving it as a IOC and uh, uh, a global account, uh, which URL and API key will be used. We can provide from here. So once we add this, We'll be able to see the data again, but uh, here a little different query. We need to add 
let's say input lookup and ioc.csv so we'll be able to see all the ioc uh, details that we fetched from that ioc apis so uh, uh, this are uh, this is the functionality of add-on here we'll be able to see like uh, uh, different indicator types such as ip address host uh, domain uh, and others url etc so we'll be collecting data of uh, total eight different uh, uh, indicator types so in order to visualize this data we uh, we have created a separate app uh, uh, which is a decipher app for splunk and uh, 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 in splunk's context we need uh, to separate these functionalities for collecting this data and uh, visualizations that's why we have created two different uh, modules so uh, so now to, in order to visualize the data we need to go to uh, decipher app for splunk here uh, first we need to uh, configure uh, configure the account name uh, uh, in the app uh, in order to get additional details from uh, from the uh, from the uh, uh, decipher environment about uh, iocs so uh, here again we need to give url and uh, api key which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, compatible with this url and we need to save it so once we get like this message api key saved successfully once the setup is done we can go to uh, uh, this uh, we can use other three tabs uh, so first tab is like uh, uh, decipher alerts uh, so here we'll be uh, seeing all the alerts uh, related to the alerts that we co uh, collected from the decipher environments such as attack surface certificate and all eight categories we can see here so first is uh, 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 first we are showing all the counts uh, of alerts in the selected time range and uh, uh, we are showing this arrow mark like uh, uh, are they increased from the previous count or uh, or <laughs> or uh, or they are uh, or they are uh, same or decreased so uh, below to that is the uh, is the trend line we are showing for uh, for the category by default the category will be attack surface but uh, uh, let's say we want to see the data of uh, certificate uh, trends of the certificate and we can uh, always uh, click on certificate it will highlight this uh, uh, this click to field and we'll be uh, able to see all the certificates here Similarly, for vulnerability, we'll be able to uh, once we click on vulnerability, we'll be able to see vulnerability trend, and also uh, below that we are showing all the details of the of that category. So uh, here we'll be showing uh, details of that uh, of the selected category. By default, it will be a text surface, and uh, uh, that can be also selected from here and. Uh, and we can uh, see like uh, this uh, this attack surface for this url uh, subdomain is like uh, uh, having risk score 9 and top domain first seen uh, uh, created date and uh, and this fields for the attack surface we can see here uh, if we uh, want to dig in uh, more details about uh, any particular uh, of this uh, this attack surface that we are seeing then uh, we can simply click on this arrow mark and it will be showing uh, uh, all the fields uh, from the raw data uh, which is uh, which are available in the splunk environment so here we can see more details such as description possible vulnerabilities and softwares and etc so similar uh, to this uh, we have uh, we can see for other categories such as if we want to see for certificates we can always uh, click on certificates here we will be showing valid from valid to dates and and the status of the certificate and uh, we can always see more details about that certificate like uh, uh, what is the cert data what is the hash and type of the certificate and uh, and other things so uh, so uh, so we can do the same thing for uh, for like all other categories and also suppose we want to search uh, some specific certificate or something let's say uh, uh, let's say there's more data and uh, let's say we want to uh, we already found some uh, certificate uh, that we want to check the data for let's just smart something so we can always uh, click uh, add that uh, smart here and we'll be able to see all the certificates related to that here 
so uh, uh, also we can sort the certificate by uh, by this uh, uh, we can filter all the certificate uh, sorry our text surface by this uh, uh, impact let's say i want to see only uh, those certificate which have uh, impact uh, high uh, so as there are no search results uh, uh, for smart with the impact high it will it is showing no result found but let's say i want to only see this certificates all the certificates with impact high then we can always filter that based upon impact in certificate we can uh, filter based upon the status uh, uh, and other categories also we can uh, filter based upon the impact. So, so these are the functionalities that we are providing and we can always take more data using this arrow button. So, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, let's uh, move to the next uh, next step then. So. Uh, this is uh, uh, DC for IOC. So we collected uh, data for IOC in in this uh, IOC.cs we look up. So uh, we, uh, we'll, we can always select the lookup from here. We can always select the category uh, like uh, let's say I want to only see the data of IP address. Then we can always select the IP address from the indicator type and it will be showing the trend of IP address. Also, we can always click on this uh, and it will always highlight it and uh, show the trend uh, specific to that uh, category and also the details specific to that category. So uh, that we can always filter uh, filter from uh, by clicking this or 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 like uh, 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 choosing the uh, the available uh, this list from this drop down. So uh, I'll uh, keep all IOC for time being. Here we are showing the uh, the URL that we uh, that we showed and the in the setup page. So uh, we have stored this URL here. So it is showing uh, showing up uh, in this drop down. We can store multiple uh, credentials here and always select it for digging out more data. Now uh, we can also show uh, filter by time range like what are the uh, what are the IOCs that uh, showed up in last 24 hours or in last 30 days uh, and like that. So So uh, for uh, let's say we want to get more data about any particular uh, IOC. Let's say I want to get more data about this IP address. Then we can always click on this IP address and uh, it will uh, like uh, call for more details and this details will not be stored in the uh, uh, in the uh, as Splunk environment, but we are fetching it directly from the uh, from the URL that we provided here in the this setup page. So so we are directly fetching this information and we are showing up here. So uh, so what we are showing is like uh, what is the verdict of this IP address like it is malicious and uh, uh, and what is the risk score other details such as country name ASN organization and association with uh, 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 such as uh, threat actors and campaigns. So uh, according to different categories, we'll be showing different information such as for file hash. Uh, we can all uh, we are showing uh, what is the association, risk score, and groupings of that. Uh, so we can always take for more details by clicking on any of the field, and it will uh, uh, it will fetch more data from the decipher environment and show uh, show it up here. Uh, now for custom alerts, we can. Uh, 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 a uh, Splunk person can always like uh, uh, define some correlation searches uh, 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 here, such as let's say a index, uh, whatever uh, index. Uh, let's say I have some input lookup, and I want to see if this IP is matching with uh, uh, with any of the uh, any of my other data source. Then they can always define. Uh, complex search queries here and they can always uh, always save this as an alert. So what will happen is it will uh, Splunk will automatically run this uh, this specified query here and uh, and check like if there are any matches then it will automatically uh, generate a triggered alert in the Splunk uh, which will be stored in the Splunk in a different manner and uh, which will uh, which will uh, show up here. So uh, this is the Splunk's existing functionality to create uh, alerts. 
So whatever alerts that are created, we, uh, we are showing that up here. So I have uh, previously I had configured one alert which is uh, which is like showing up here. So uh, uh, we can always uh, select uh, alerts from different uh, uh, both uh, app or add-on, and we can always filter by this uh, uh, this alert name. So what we'll be showing here is like uh, how many times this alert that I have mentioned is triggered. So we can see like this alert was triggered yesterday. It was triggered 622 times, but uh, uh, today it is triggered for five, uh, 59 times only. So here we can always uh, see like uh, uh, we are seeing that uh, it is totally triggered for uh, 622 plus 59 times. So we can always uh, see results here and we can filter. Uh, we can see uh, more details uh, about that alert from here. Like we can see view results and we can see like uh, uh, for which results it was triggered. Like it was uh, as I can see here, it was triggered for this IP address for in my case. So uh, here we can see always see that uh, uh, while defining this alert, uh, we can set the severity based upon our search uh, criteria that we are defining here. So uh, we can always like give this five uh, five five severities so uh, so that that uh, alerts can be divided into the category and that severity will be showing up here. So these are the functionalities of the uh, application which will show different details about alerts, IOC and custom alerts that uh, uh, that Splunk person has created uh, in their environment for our both application and add-on. So uh, this is it.